morning. Today is December 1st. Sintosha Wednesday. It's chilly for this lack of clothing. So I've said a lot about teaching yoga and how to do yoga wrong. And today I'd like to bring the niyamas firmly into a physical place. How, we're also gonna talk about the yamas a little bit, truth and nonviolence in particular. <sighs> your physical practice, your physical practice, my physical practice. When you're doing pretzel shapes on a mat. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> never mind. So, there's lots of different, Mm. How'd you say this in a way that is meaningful? So, go to a studio. There's a teacher there. They say a bunch of shit. You do a bunch of things, you go home. However, in amongst that space and time, they may say some things or you may feel some things that don't jive. So when you're in a posture, well, I don't know what accent that is, when you're in a posture and it doesn't feel good. And this doesn't, you know, this is going to take a lot longer to say than it's going to take to do. But when you don't feel good in a posture, you can rifle through the niyamas. Be honest, right? We start with self-reflection. And then we can be honest with how that feels. Does it feel good? Does it feel bad? What kind of bad is it? Does it feel bad like a, geez, I need to work on this posture more because I've stopped working on it and I'm not happy with the way it feels? Or does it feel bad like something is not right? Right, there's growth pain, I guess you could say, and then there's damage pain. It's not a bad way to look at it. It's not always easy to tell the difference between them either. I think that either one could at any moment turn into one or the other. It's slippery. It's slippery. Self-reflective. You're paying attention to how you feel. Um, you're keeping purity of thought in that you're being... You're not having... A, errant thoughts, right? Not like, well, I'm going to do it anyway, even though it hurts. It's not, that's not nonviolent. It's not truthful. It's, you're not keeping the purity of mind and body for yourself. The discipline to do this kind of a thing in every asana in a class. The discipline to change the posture to something that feels more appropriate, something that will give you a better practice. Hey, dude. The reflection to go back and decide that this new posture is something that feels good, right? The ability to surrender to that moment. It can be tempting to try and do something extra good or extra strong or extra deep or extra intensive because you're in a class surrounded by people and you want not, you don't want to just look good, but you do want to look proficient. You want to look capable. You don't want to look like you're a fish out of water. And it might not even be a conscious thought at first. So the niyamas, purity and cleanliness, of mind and body, self-reflection, contentment, discipline, surrender. Like these are things that can be running 24 seven, like a subroutine, always handy. It's not just something that you apply to your cousin's bachelor party or something. You know what I mean? If they're running all the time, they get easier to look at. They, it gets, it becomes an easier comparison to consider the moment you're in and consider how <clears throat> you can make decisions to bring that moment more in line with your own beliefs, your own truths, your own, 
your own self. And this is important as a guiding framework, as a concept. Because remember that the niyamas aren't a way to consider if something is good or bad. Uh, a, a, a light on in a room, a light off in the room, right? That neither one is good or bad depending on the circumstances. Both are good and bad. Now, both of them can be bad depending on the circumstances. Both can be good depending on the circumstances. The niyamas are a framework to give us a place to start looking. Right? And I think that that's one of the... That's, that's, that's something for later. It's a, it's a starting point. The niyamas are not an end point. But a starting point as a way to take a look at something that's happening and decide where that fits in your life and where the next decision is going to take you and if that decision is going to take you in the direction you want to go a direction you're willing to go or a direction you don't want to go They don't tell us if it's good and bad. That's up for us. We, we have to decide that. Cleanliness of thought is not, like we're not talking absolute, we're talking, are you, you know, are you being good to you? Are you being honest with you? Are you being honest with your own uh, beliefs and values? Honesty, you know, uh, purity and cleanliness of thought for a person who's a vegan regarding food is different for a person who's not a vegan. But you can apply it the same way. Same thing with discipline. It's not discipline to do, like to get up and go to work every day. It's discipline to scrutinize your own choices. Maybe getting up and going to work every day is not in line with your choices because you don't like the company or you don't like the job or something else. Right? It's personal discipline. Purity and cleanliness of mind and body. Discipline, self-reflection, contentment and surrender. And it's important to note too that this is not aligned with a religion of any kind. Yoga is not a religion. It's a discipline. It's a, it's a practice. If you're breathing, you're already halfway there. It's a discipline for humans, designed by humans, to talk about and, and reflect upon what it is to be human. Just think about it. Maybe, maybe you have watched one of these and you're like, what is he talking about? Maybe you've thought about the Niyamas before. It's a good practice. And the more you do it, the more accessible it is. Remember, neurological connections. The more you do it, the more accessible it is. <sighs> Thank you for joining me on my practice today. Namaste.